with the small crowd here, I'm, rather than get up and stand uh -huh. in front, I'll just sit here and we can casually discuss it. So. Certainly. Uh, I'll tell you my name real fast, Sam. Uh, ben. Ben, okay. Appreciate it. Um, well, yeah, my name is Matt. And it's awesome to get to talk about public works, but in particular STEM and civil engineering. Um, like we were talking about, I love my job. There's a lot of neat things that I get to do. So we're going to talk about a little bit of that. Um, first, I have to put the March Madness bracket up there, right? The, one of the giant, biggest basketball tournaments in the world is happening today. Not sure if you're aware of that. Um, but I think it's worth thinking about when you're looking at your future careers. Is civil engineering you know, a top contender? Is it something you're just thinking about? Or is it kind of a far-fetched, there's no way, but I still, I guess I'll check it out. So Ben, for example, for you, it, you know, is this something you're really considering right now, or is it yeah, something that yeah. Yeah. It would be like one of your number one seeds up there right now? Yeah. 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 yeah, for me, for me it was probably like a, you know, a middle round when I was going through high school and college. Um, but the more I learned about it, the more I realized it was an opportunity to make a difference, to do some really cool things, build stuff. Um, and so I ended up doing civil engineering. Um, this is me now. I've got four kids. I actually live here in Gordy, so it's awesome to get to be here at Gordy High School. I'd love to be a part of uh, anything you guys have going forward. Um, but the office is in Alhambra. Commute's not too bad. But I've been doing what I've been doing for 15 years now. Um, I thought it would be one of those two-year things, and uh, maybe yeah, just move on and try something else. But it's, it's been so neat to date, actually, that uh, I'm still there, still enjoying it, lots of neat things to do. So. Um, that's a little bit about me. I did. I went to school out in Colorado, um, got my engineering degree there, and uh, have enjoyed it. A lot of people think that there's no females in engineering or in the STEM sciences, which is totally wrong. Um, I met my wife doing studying engineering, and um, she actually was a math teacher in Gundor High School for a while as well. Um, but quick things just to look back, you know, what, what kind of tips me off that maybe engineering should at least be something we're thinking about. Uh, it was a range of things from Legos, numbers, construction projects, and track my own stats in my sports leagues. Um, a lot of things that uh, maybe other people do, but um, could be triggers. Is this anything on there? So that might be something that says, yeah, you should think about engineering as well. Always fun to watch construction projects. Um, so we're going to touch briefly on STEM or STEAM. I know you guys have added in the A recently as well. Um, we'll talk the quick intro of engineering, dive into civil specifically, talk about where I work and what I do. Um, and then really some good practical things, I think, that would help you kind of pursue a pathway towards engineering. Um, first STEM, was this a term that was familiar to you guys? Have you heard of STEM before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, a couple earlier on um, weren't familiar with the acronym, but it is science, technology, engineering, mathematics. It's broad field, of course. We're focusing on engineering today, but we'll touch on a few of the other STEM aspects. Yes, that is Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, Space is SWAT. Um, yeah. I, I still, as, as much as that's been out for many years now, I still love base swap apps for my favorite pieces of technology. Um, but what's cool, I think, to frame STEM and engineering in particular is just this ability to dream about something, to shape the world, and then to actually have the opportunity to make, make it happen. So, um, not sure if you've ever asked yourself this question, but in 10 years, what did the world look like? Hovercraft. Any route. Hovercraft. <laughs> awesome cars. That bottom right picture to me, that's some type of teleportation machine, man. I would love that. Save our commutes, change change things dramatically. Um, maybe those self-sustaining communities that you see in the middle picture. But it can go anywhere. And the reality is that behind those types of big dreams that actually change society, it's often engineering that makes that happen. Uh, so a good question to think about. Um, there are a lot of types of engineering that, you, that go into uh, the whole realm of serving the public. Um, some of these you've probably heard of, some not. Um, there's so much crossover in a lot of ways. As a civil engineer, I work with you know more than half of these other types of engineers on a regular basis. Um, but we are going to focus specifically on civil. If you've got questions on the other ones, we can talk about that for sure as well. Um, but here's some neat pictures of infrastructure. Infrastructure is just kind of the, the buildings, the structures, the things that make the world we live in what they are. Um, do you recognize any of those pictures up there? SF. Golden State Bridge. Yeah. Golden State, yeah. Is that the Hoover Dam? Hoover Dam. Uh huh. Yes, yeah. And then the one, the tallest building in the world in um, uh, in Saudi Arabia. Dubai. 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 Sorry, uh, Dubai. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we could, there could be countless pictures, but uh, at the very end, if there's time too, I've just got some other fun pictures of just amazing things that civil engineers have built. Um, down below, there's some branches of what civil engineering is. 
if you want to specialize within civil engineering, you can go a lot of different routes. Um, that's part of the beauty is you can get really narrow or you can keep it broad. And at my agency, we can, you know, we have such a, a large group that you can go and you can do water, and then you can do buildings, and then you can do aviation, then you can do geotechnical. Um, and so it's really neat to have that opportunity and that crossover. Um, like I mentioned, I work for LA County. Public works is just kind of the, the terminology for what it means to serve the public, to provide that infrastructure, provide services. Um, but fun to point out that on Forbes, which is just you know, a giant business publication, we're one of America's best employers. They publish this list every year, um, and we ranked ahead of Disney and Coca-Cola and the city, you know, very important we ranked above the city. Um, but uh, no, there's just so many neat things about it, and we'll talk more about in general, just some of the perks of engineering as well. Um, but for me, at Public Works, um, we really cover a lot of the disciplines of civil engineering, like I said. We, we break it down into those six core service areas that are shown. Um, I specialize in the water side of things, so we're going to talk about that, but we'll touch on the other pieces as well. Um, so you see all the different aspects. And those six right there, I want to just kind of help us look how those have touched your daily life, even just today, getting into school. So we're going to briefly run through that. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the picture of that dam. If you drive by, that's just Northwest Pasadena. That's our Devil's Gate Dam, really neat structure. Um, but when you wake up in the morning, what's one of the first things that you do? Brush my teeth. Brush your teeth, I hope, right? Yeah. Um, maybe you skip that sometimes, but you turn on your faucet and nasty, dirty water comes out, right? No. It's oh. clean water. <laughs> Some states they have that. <laughs> Some but, states they have it. Yeah. But you are very blessed and fortunate here to have your clean water coming out of your tap. Um, sure, there could be a disaster that can change that. But we take that for granted, right? That you're able to stick, you know, you can put a cup in your faucet and drink that, no problem, it's safe. Um, it's civil engineering that really has made that a reality. People don't think that where the water comes from when you go through that process. Um, it's often stored in big tanks. Sometimes people associate it with the tanks. But they forget that maybe that giant dam has a role in actually getting the water to your house. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, and the so, canal? And the canals, yes. Yeah. We got some great pictures of those. So besides brushing your teeth, what's something else that you might do? <laughs> probably, right? Yeah. Right. There's a couple different types of ways to probably use a restroom. Um, but same thing, right? That waste, whether it's the toilet or the trash can, has to go somewhere, right? You guys ever thought about what happens? You put it in your trash can, the truck takes it away, and then it just disappears? Do they, do they launch it up to the moon? No, <laughs> put it like on a landfill where they have all the trash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A landfill. And again, so that's a, a pretty detailed picture on the right, but the whole point of it is just to say, look, they don't just go dump it in a pile somewhere. It actually has these specific layers, and the trash gets sorted or organized, and they look at what chemical reactions will occur, and what's the best way to stack it and compact it, make sure that it doesn't affect all of us who drive by it on the freeway, you don't want that stench. You don't want something to fall. You don't want that to contaminate your groundwater supplies, right? We have underground water that if it's in contact with trash, you're gonna start drinking trashy water. So a lot of engineering into that as well. Um, and again, those are two things that you did before you came to school today. Um, and then of course, getting to school. Um, anybody take a plane to school today? No. How'd you guys get here though? Uh, my mom took me. In car? Yeah. No. Okay, how'd you go? Bye. Bye. Yeah. Some people have already probably walk, right? And I've heard there's some that use the metro. Um, so no matter how you get here, that system was another thing that was designed and built with a team of civil engineers. Um, it's a key part to have the signage in the right place to make sure that it's properly labeled, that people can do it safely. But if you didn't have roads, imagine just jumping through everything and trying to get there in the right time. Not going to happen very easily. So um, transportation, another huge part of getting here to school. And then you arrived, right? You recognize any of these pictures? The school, my school. There's Tawari, right? Um, Hollywood Bowl. Hollywood Bowl. What about the top left? That's another Tawari school. Royal Oaks. That's Royal Oaks, yeah. yeah. That's actually where my kids are at right now. And it looks a little bit different than that picture because over the last couple of years, civil engineers designed an enhancement to the campus to expand it, right? Those are now K-8 schools. Um, and then the bottom right, anybody know that one? It doesn't exist yet. The LA Rams Stadium. The new LA Rams Stadium <laughs> is being built as we speak. Uh, so it's going to be an awesome facility. Um, but guess what? Did they just throw somebody out there and give them some Legos and say, go have at it? Or was there somebody who actually created a design plan 
did the countless thousands of hours of stakeholder things to figure out what was important to the community, what's the best way to do it, how to make it successful. Um, they had civil engineers tackling every aspect of that um, before they even started breaking the ground and now building it. Um, and then I'm assuming that you came from some neighborhood. Um, the development services side of this is kind of how do you fit all the houses in the right spot? How do you make sure that the roads are properly aligned? How do we have efficient ways of travel? It's kind of stepping back a layer to look at kind of overall how can our community play. And again, that's civil engineers. So as you left your neighborhood and came into the new community here at Dwight High School, it was those who had been really working on overall master plans to develop Dwight that uh, made it so convenient and easy for you to do so. That old black and white picture, man, they've been doing civil engineering for a long time. Um, I don't think we're going to go into the history now, but it's civil engineering is the oldest form of engineering. It used to just be military engineering and civilian engineering, which turned into civil engineering to serve the civil public. All right, and then the last category was kind of the emergency management. So again, we're here in Guarani. Um, a couple years back, I think the summer of 2016, there was the fish fire. You guys remember here? Mm -hmm. and yeah, the hiking the trail. Could yeah, the trash yeah. the trail. Yeah. Um, again, living here, that picture on the top left is actually from my house. Like the flames were coming down. We had to evacuate. We were part of that community. Um, and thankfully, saw the fire department. I mean, they were awesome. They saved all the houses, which was amazing. But after the whole mountainside burns, people often don't think about you know, what still remains as a problem. Like, oh, the fire's out, we're all good. But it's civil engineers who actually have to decide how are we gonna mitigate and make sure that everyone is safe after the fire is over. Because when rain comes, you're gonna wash down all kinds of dirt and mud and debris, and that can be just as damaging as the fires in a lot of ways. And so it might be building structures, it might be putting temporary things to channelize it. So that middle picture on the left is Valley View Elementary, actually. They shut it down. It was like a snow day instead of a, it was a mud day. Um, because there was so much that washed out after those fires, they had to bring out equipment and haul it out. Um, big engineering effort there as well on how to solve that problem after a big disaster has happened. Mm -hmm. And on the right, the top right is Oroville Dam, another disaster a few years back that you may have heard of, um, but that was up north in California. But bottom right is an earthquake, right? We've probably mm -hmm. all felt an earthquake. And uh, we engineer the structures to withstand most earthquakes, but we can't make anything completely, completely earthquake proof unless we spend a lot of money. And so part of solving any problem is deciding how do you solve the problem in a way that's gonna have the most benefit for the least cost, still keep everybody safe. And so uh, you might design a freeway for a magnitude 7.0 earthquake, um, but in the one set every few hundred years that you get an 8.0, there's gonna be some damage like this. And so those are the tough decisions that engineers who design these kind of structures have to make. Um, especially if you become a licensed engineer, which we'll talk about in a minute. So a little about what I have done in my job. Uh, like I said, my focus has been on water. Um, yes, that building on the right looks like an outhouse, um, but it's not. It's, uh, it's way cooler than an outhouse. It's, in fact, it's a, an injection well where you pump water into the ground. And so the diagram on the left kind of paints this picture of where, especially here in LA where we have tons and tons of people, we, we pump so much water out of the ground that we start dropping our water level down, right? Yet we have the ocean that's up here. And so just like anything, right? With gravity, the stuff roll uphill or downhill? It rolls downhill, right? So the ocean water is higher. It flushes downhill into our drinking water. And all of a sudden, when you turn on your tap, you could get salt water if we don't do something about it, right? Nobody wants to drink salt water, I don't think, right? Well, you've been at the beach and tasted this. So um, instead, we actually pump water into the ground and we make like an invisible underground dam made out of water. So that way you have your fresh water being pumped in and you keep the dirty water on one side and you keep the drinking water on the other side. So when you turn on your faucet, you can continue to get non-salty water. It's pretty neat stuff. Most people don't know what happens and if you saw that on the side of the road, you would just think it was an outhouse, right? Um, I've also done a lot of work on our dams. Uh, these are all local dams that we have up in the canyons. So you mentioned one of the, the trails, but if you go up like Azusa Canyon Road, mm -hmm. you can see some of these dams. Um, they're flood control dams primarily. Um, but these are really important structures for our water supply and everything else. The bottom right is me uh, working with the fire department on a helicopter trip to inspect those dams to make sure that they were safe. Um, so Especially after all the rain we had this season. Yeah. I heard we're finally out of the drought. Right, right, right. <laughs> so it's been, uh, it's been neat to have a lot more water finally. And we got more work to do, but <laughs> water is good. Uh, anybody been to Raging Waters? You're familiar with that water park in Soros Andinas? Mm -hmm. um, 
So we have a dam right by there. That's the top left. Um, we film movies at our dam, so it's kind of a cool nexus. We get to actually interact with Hollywood in some sense as well. Um, we have computer software programs on the bottom right where we set up what's called a telemetry system to like monitor different equipment remotely. Um, but that, that picture in the middle looks just like a hose, right? With a bunch of water coming out. Um, and I, I put down there, that's a 117 inch valve. You can see how big it is in the picture right above it. So it's, it's a gigantic valve, bigger than me. And that valve is able to read 5,000 cubic feet per second of water. I think that's hard to picture, right? So think of a regular garden hose. Um, that's less than one CFS. So 5,000 times that is a good way to think about it is a basketball. Basketball is about one cubic foot. Um, so picture 5,000 basketballs launching out of that giant hose in one second. That's a lot of water, right? <laughs> Um, so our dams are holding just massive amounts of water behind it and sometimes we need to send it downstream and we can do so at really, really high rates. Um, also, I do a lot of the strategic planning to make sure that kind of the, what we, the whole area that we live in doesn't run out of water. Mm -hmm. um, and so you might drive by something that looks like this. It looks like a pretty lake picture, right? Um, it's something that we call a spreading ground. And it's not just a lake. Um, it serves as a lake, but it has the bottom of it is a soft surface that allows water to soak in through the ground and it recharges our groundwater supply. Mm -hmm. So by building these structures in the right place, we actually then can capture all the rainwater, make sure that we put it down there, and that helps us become more locally sustainable. We don't have to um, import water from Colorado River, we don't have to bug Northern California. Um, and so a lot of people are working hard to try to make us, LA County, just sustainable right here. If we got cut off from all of our own water supplies, can we capture enough rainwater, pull from our groundwater, and make sure that we can be sustainable for a long time to come? Um, on that note, a trivia question. What do you think our average rainfall is here in like downtown LA? I want to say 48, what? inches? Yeah. I would say there? like less than that. You have a mess over there? Oh, it like one or two, like on average, right? You say average, not this, not this past season. This past season is like phenomenal. It's it's always fun to hear what people think. The average is fifteen point five inches. Oh, okay. So still less than thirty eight, but more than one. Or two. Okay. Um, but that average obviously is still way higher than what we've seen in the last five six years of the drought. Yeah. Um, and this year we've had nineteen inches already. Yeah. And the season's not even over. We've had more than average. But it's not as much above average as we would think. It's just we all were so used to the drought that we've been getting. So uh, with climate change, people are expecting us to get wetter wets and drier dries. We're going to see all these seasons keep coming. So we got to make sure that we capture the rain whenever we have the chance to do so. This is how we do it. I showed you some pictures of dams up there already. Um, the lake that I showed you is kind of the spreading ground. So we can release water from the dams, send it to those lakes, put it underneath the, the surface here, eventually pump it out. Um, there's also a lot of people working hard to work on what we have to call distributed infrastructure up there. That means at your house, you can do structural modifications, your garden and rain barrels, things mm -hmm. that you can use to catch the rain off of your roof and actually put that back into the groundwater supply. Or you can use that to irrigate your lawns and things like that as well. So a lot of the water problems that engineers get to work on. Like I said, I do a lot of resiliency related stuff. It ties into pollution and climate change and working with other people. Um, trying to make sure that our old infrastructure gets updated. Um, and a, a real recent issue to that is this thing that was called Measure W. So I know uh, only your teacher is old enough to vote in this room, but um, it was on the ballot just this past November, and people started to realize, okay. He, he knows. He's very involved with politics. All right. Do you remember Measure W on the ballot? Okay. It was, it was a local <laughs> measure, right? And it's, it's different than all the candidates, the people that are voting for, um, but it was a tax which um, a lot of people at first were like, I don't wanna pay more taxes to the government, but there was so much, especially following the drought, people realized the need to be able to capture that rainwater and make it sustainable, that actually it passed successfully. And so there is a new revenue system for LA County now to build new structures. So we need more civil engineers. We need more civil engineers to go put that money to good use, to talk to the community about how can we best steward that money and we can use it wisely. Um, and that money is all geared for those three goals, improving water quality, increasing water supply, and enhancing communities. Um, so it's neat how civil engineer gets to really have that broad focus on combining all these benefits for the public. And I said it's, it's almost $300 million a year. So that's a lot of money that civil engineers need to be spending now in conjunction with the water industry. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so we need to talk about how do we become an engineer. I know you said you're a sophomore. I'll stop. I mean, mostly sophomores from what I've seen today. Um, and so I think you probably started to do maybe bio biology, chemistry, probably not physics yet. Um, but if you get a chance, that's a great course to take. Certainly, uh, in, if you're pursuing an engineering degree in college, you want to do some physics as well. Um, and then, of course, the math side of things, very important just to have a sound mathematical background. Um, these are the courses that are really um, good ones to focus on. They'll set you up well. You'll further expand on that. And math is like a lot of things where you just keep building on it, right? It's like riding a bike where you, you learn it, and then you can expand and put in new skills and new tricks. Um, but it's going to apply in, in new ways. And if you look all the way back to that slide where I had about changing the world, it really starts with some of the fundamentals of what you've done in math and science that can actually translate that to reality. Um, and then it's always good to pause on the schools that have engineering programs here in California. Like I pointed out earlier, I, I went to school in Colorado and I came out here after, but there's a lot of good programs right here locally. Um, all the state university programs, the private schools. Um, I have friends and colleagues uh, from almost all of these schools that I work with, um, and they've all had good experiences. There's a lot of good things. Um, if you have questions about that, we can talk about that after or anytime, really. Um, and then going forward to a degree path, if you're at any of those schools, you obviously need to start with your high school diploma. Um, getting a bachelor's degree is the most important step because then you are most marketable in the engineering market. So some firms right now are requiring a master's degree as well. Um, it's important, yes, but I would still uh, state that other things are even more important than your master's. Because if you, have, if you have a doctorate even, if you're the most educated person in the room, but you cannot communicate your idea to somebody else, you're still not going to be very marketable in the, in the job market. So those need to go hand in hand. We'll talk about that. I've got a buddy who made this chart, or uses this chart, which is funny. He, yes, he wants to serve the public and do cool things, <coughs> but he wanted to be an engineer. So he can tell his family and friends, hey, just trust me, I'm an engineer. I think he also likes the other aspects of it, but <clears throat> funny to point out, but he also has now become licensed. And this picture here is what your license looks like. Um, after you've been working as an engineer for a little while, you can get officially certified and become a professional engineer. Uh, and what that means is if you, whether it's the stadium or a dam or any other building, a road, a bridge, you have passed the test to say that you are an expert in the field. And when you put your stamp on those design plans, you sign your name off on it. it, means you are the responsible party saying this is safe for the public. Um, so it's a big responsibility, but also a big honor. Um, and so that's kind of something that many engineers are aspiring to. Um, I've been licensed for about 13 years, and you know, year to year kind of depends on using it in different ways. Um, but definitely something you want to keep on your radar for a career path in engineering. But before all this happens, um, I think you should think about some of these other opportunities. Um, most people have heard of internships, and I don't know uh, how familiar you are, but there's things online, there's a lot of uh, other web pages designed to help connect you to these opportunities. And I think the school itself, you know, the, the counseling or career office, something, uh, should continue to develop that program as well. We can help with that. But we even have, once you're in college, we have a student worker program where you get to come and help shadow and support and assist with engineering duties. Um, it also gets your foot in the door so that if you do a good job and then you graduate, we already know you if we say, hey, come work for us. Um, so there's a lot of good advantages to the internships. Um, externships, uh, similar but slightly different, different there in some counter. You can see, even just doing research, you can also partner with different universities. Um, Duarte has the City of Hope program, right? That is such a cool resource uh, that so many people don't have. And that in itself is a great exposure, whether it's just learning or putting out your resume for, for down the road. Um, and I always tell people, being an engineer, you should do it because you like it. You know, we talked about some of my passions earlier. Um, you may have some similar passions. You shouldn't do anything just for the money. But it's always worth acknowledging, if you're going to take this path, what, what might it be? Uh, and that is a perk. Engineering does pay higher than certain other professions. Um, it's, it's complicated professional work, and I think that's why that kind of compensation comes with it. But uh, entry level starts about 50 to 70K. And you can see up here, top salaries are well over $100,000 up into the millions. You've, you've heard of some famous engineers um, who are not hurting for money at all. Um, but in general, it's, it's well paying. And so that's just a nice side perk for me. I do it just because we love what we do. But 
<coughs> and Ellie County Public Works, where I work, I put a question mark over there. Um, our current starting salary is sixty-four thousand dollars. So if you graduated today um, as a brand new engineer, uh, we would hire you on, and you would instantly be making sixty-four thousand dollars a year. Anybody know what that is? Um, making more than me. Okay, I'll so, tell you that flat so, out. I've been so, teaching so eight years. Been working for a long time as an expert in their own field, so it's not necessarily fair. <laughs> um, but yeah, anybody know what sixty-four k translates to at an hourly rate? Yeah. Anybody guess? It's thirty-one bucks an hour, about. Um, and then I also put up here that the U.S. news rankings uh, include civil engineering as one of the top 100 jobs. And there's tons of other STEM jobs in the top 100 as well. So not just other engineering fields, but the computer sciences and everything else. Um, they, they are recognized across the country based on the number of projected jobs and the need, the median salary, the unemployment rate. Um, those are high recognized, coveted jobs. Um, you should expect some job security if you pursue engineering as well. Uh, and then, of course, some skills to focus on. Uh, these all should make sense. They align with kind of the coursework that we've talked about. But I do want to pause again on the, the teamwork and the communication. That cannot be emphasized enough. An engineer, yes, is going to solve problems and build some stuff and figure things out, but you have to be able to talk to people. So other electives um, are essential, you know, whether it's art, public speaking, things like that to help you frame other, other aspects of what you could apply to the engineering world. Um, those are super, super important. And when I get a resume or when I conduct interviews for new engineers in our office, we are looking to see if somebody is, is well-rounded. Um, we, we, if you have a 4.2 GPA and president of the computer club and everything else, that's wonderful and that is very valuable. But we also want to see that you have something else that's going to show you can communicate, you can work in a team, you can help solve problems collaboratively, and that you're willing to do so or just keep learning it and that kind of stuff. Um, so the last slide here is something that, you know, is fun for me to walk through. Um, these are some things that if you, if these resonate with you, maybe you should think about engineering first. Um, if they don't, that's fine. It doesn't mean engineering is not for you. But we've already talked about math and science, right? There's a big core tie there. If you like thinking about the way things work, how they can be improved, um, that kind of thing. If you've taken apart something just to figure it out, often a sign of an engineer. Uh, do you enjoy facing challenges, working to find a solution? Um, I think that, that determination is a core element. You know, the people that I'm around, if they see a problem that hasn't been faced before, they don't just say, all right, <laughs> that's too bad. They say, shoot, we're gonna, we're gonna figure this out, right? And maybe no one else has figured this out before, but we're gonna figure it out together and make it happen. Um, and then wanting to help people make a difference. Like I said, I work for LA County and it's, it's a public sector, meaning it's like a government job serving the people directly. Um, but even those in the private sector are often doing neat infrastructure projects that serve the public. Um, really good opportunity. And then, do you think engineering concepts sound interesting? If you like new technology and tools, again, that's, that's another indicator. I have a picture of a drone down there. Has anybody ever flown a, a remote drone? Yeah? It's pretty fun, right? We have a drone club on campus, actually. Cool. Yeah, Mr. Traeger is the one that's spearheading that, and um, I'm a co-advisor. Oh, that's yeah. great. That's a really good idea. And they're, they're super cool toys, but they're very powerful tools. Mm -hmm. And in the engineering world, so I now get to use drones. If I want to go inspect a, a dam, I can very quickly and safely and clearly do so by flying a drone up there, especially if there's a rock slide and you can't get there other ways, right? Yeah. Um, but we also use it to, to do mapping services from above. Mm -hmm. You can have three D signals that can develop contour maps and other things. If you're going to design a building, um, super powerful tools, um, and you get to have some fun while you're doing it. So, so join Mr. Traeger on Fridays so afternoon. <laughs> and uh, I can show you some pictures after we have some questions. It's just some neat stuff we've gotten from our drone footage. Um, but that's the quick download for me for now. I want to make sure we have pause for a few questions before I go into any of the extra stuff here. So what are your thoughts, questions, concerns? Um, you mentioned earlier about like you put your staff on a building that you constructed. Yeah. Um, do you take, like, let's say it breaks down. Do you take like punishment for it or do like a cut in your salary or like? That's a great question. Um, generally what it means when you put your stamp is that it has been designed according to the proper standards. And so liability-wise, there's generally not a punishment. If you are putting your stamp 
inappropriately, there can be consequences. You could lose your job, you could get fired, you could lose your license. But most engineers who are practicing ethically, according to the law, will have ensured that they have you know, read up, they understand the standards, they follow the common practices, and they're putting their stamp on there saying, you know, all expected things happen, this structure will be fine. And so you are, you are released from being held liable um, and there won't be consequence. Like I said, if you spend enough money, you can make anything almost fail-proof. But an engineer really has to think about the factor of safety. And again, what's the right balance, the cost and the benefit of every single project? And so you are saying that according to your discernment, with all the standards, this thing is going to work. Oh, that's time.